suffer not the little children. That's right. And you know, the Bible says that we must come to him as little children, right? Amen. You know, uh, children have such a tender heart for God, you know, and um, we need to have childlike faith. Amen. You know, because when, you know, I know that uh, my children, when there's a storm or they get scared, they, they come to us. They come to mama and dad. And, um, you know, God said he would always protect us also. And we got to look at God as being our father, our daddy. We can run to him. Amen? That's right. You know, we're living in this last days when, when things, if you look around, things are just, it's just getting bad. You know, you look on the news and watch the news, and, and even if you're on the Internet, you read about all this stuff that's going on that's evil and bad. But you know what? God says when these things happen, look up, for your redemption draws nigh. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Nathan. Behold, he comes, shining like the sun at the trumpet. declaring the word of the Lord and these are the days of your servant Moses righteousness being restored and though these are days of great trial a famine and darkness and sword still we are the voice in the desert crying prepare ye the way of the lord behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call so lift your voice it's the year of jubilee and down of zion seal salvation are the days of Ezekiel the dry bones becoming as flesh and these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise and these are the days of the harvest the fields are as wide in your world and we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. And at the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, out of science till salvation comes. Behold, he comes, he's riding on the clouds, hallelujah, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice, and out of science till salvation 
comes. Oh, there's no God like Jehovah. Come on, sing it like you mean it now. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 He who he comes, he's riding on the clouds. Oh, glory to God. At the trumpet falls, so lift your voice. It's a year of Jubilee. And out of Zion's still salvation comes. Behold, he comes. He's riding home oh, in his splendor and his glory. Hallelujah. So lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. see him now in all his splendor and his glory hallelujah oh we gotta lift our voices here up to believe and down of zion seal salvation comes. lift your voice oh we're in jubilee time hallelujah God, hallelujah. Mm. Yo, oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Whew, let's praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. We give you glory today, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise your holy name, God. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, give God the glory. Hallelujah. Give God the glory. Praise you, Lord. Give God the glory. Thank you. 
I believe this has become like our theme song. <laughs> Amen. This is like every Sunday we I hear somebody say, Can we do the river song? <laughs> it is a powerful song. Whoever wrote this, I tell you, it was divinely inspired by God because this is an anointing song. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a river. Yeah. 
I believe we need Ronnie to blow that uh, shofar. And I believe if somebody get their flag out and begin to worship God in the back of this building, God's going to touch you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you, <laughs> whatever you, if you want to sing that again or whatever you got. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, there is a river.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Give me a swig of water here. Tell you, some of you may feel like you're in a hopeless situation, but without, with Jesus, you're not without hope. His eye is on the sparrow. Hallelujah. Discouraged. Why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart feel heavy? And long for heaven's sweet home. For Jesus is my portion. A And I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I
Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Why should I feel discouraged? Hallelujah. Why should the shadows come? (laughs) Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven's sweet? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend, hallelujah, it's he. Tiny sparrow, <laughs> and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I. My Father God, hallelujah, he watches me. That's why I sing, because I'm happy. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, fall on me. Hallelujah. I know, I know, I know, I know he watches over me. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I pray you'd wet everybody in the house this morning with a dew from heaven. Lord, don't let it be a light dew, but let it be a heavy dew. Glory to God that every part of us would be wet by the presence of the Holy Ghost. 
that river, hallelujah, that flowed out of Calvary. God, we love you, we praise you, we exalt you. We're never left alone. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. A thousand may fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Shela behind every hill of Bahia. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, lift up your heads. The people of God, lift up your heads. For your Lord has given you the victory. The victory is not below you, but it is above you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Somebody shout hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Master. You said before, you, before the call, you will answer, and while they are yet speaking, you will hear. You said, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things, which I know us not. You said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. You said, here before you've never asked for anything, but Lord, you said, now ask, ask in your name. And in the Greek it says, if you don't have it, you'll make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Woo! Shut on on the Baha'i. Woo! <laughs> I shama, I shama, shama koya, I shia mo huya, ikia kia kia siya wo kuya, I am a shika haya ye wo hosia, isa, isa, isa kuya, ika mo huya, amo ho sha kashai, I sha ye wo ho shika mo, amo sha ishi, ishi kuya, asa. I am the God of peace, I am the God of mercy. My cross is the peace that I have offered to man. And those that come to me through Calvary receive peace with me. But those that come to me through Calvary receive my peace that comes from me. It is a peace that passes all understanding. It is a peace that the world is not aware of. It is a peace that only my people can walk in. It is an inner peace that I have given them. An assurance, a confidence that I am their creator and I am their salvation. And that they are my children. And they are my family. And I will not withhold any good thing from my people, saith the Lord. For I have great peace for them. I have the restoration of their joy. I have all the fruit of the Spirit. I have all the promises that I have given my people. And they are yea and amen to my people, saith the Lord. So rejoice in the goodness of the Lord today. Rejoice in the mercy and the loving kindness of your Creator and your salvation this day, saith the Lord, for I do have my eyes upon my people, just as I have my eyes on the sparrow, just as I have my eyes on the lilies of the field. And from the tiniest creation, the mosquito or the gnat, to the largest of my creation, 
I have watched over them and blessed them. How much more shall I take care of my children? Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and worship him right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's somebody in here today. You just asked the Lord this week, have you not heard me, Lord? It just seems like you don't hear me anymore. But the Lord said, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I'm already working. I'm already working, saith the Lord. I'm already working. 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 <laughs> Woo! Punch somebody and say, the Lord's already working on my behalf. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Shela Mahanda Bahaya. Hallelujah. I dare somebody just, if you can, just pray in tongues a few minutes. Oh, hallelujah. Just worship him. If God, just, if you, if you can, if you can do that, just begin to work. Just begin to pray in tongues. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Maria, my shanda me kela mahande hea. Oh, Rabba shala la no mahonda be hela bahanda hela bahaya. Ye ta ya ta ya la no mashila mahanda. Ye ta la no mokola no mashanda be hea. Oh, la mashata de la mahaya. Hallelujah. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 I was talking to somebody on the phone this morning. They said, you just don't know how smart I am. I never talked to this person before. Said it was a doctor. They said, you just don't know how smart I am. You just don't know the education that I got. Look at somebody say, you just don't know how smart the one is in me. <laughs> he created everything. He knows everything. I know nothing, but he knows everything. Glory to God. I'm not smart, but he's smart. Let me know what I'm talking about. Glory to God. You can go through 12 years of school and go through eight years of college, but if you don't have Jesus, you're still not smart. You got to know him. Amen. I'm glad I know him this morning. Can we have some ushers this morning? Woo, I'm drunk. You say, how do you get drunk? I'm drunk on the Holy Spirit. You know, divers' tongues is amazing to me because sometimes I pray in Italian. Sometimes I pray, I've been told I pray in Spanish. I've been told I pray in Hebrew. Don't know what language you'd be praying in, but I know that God understands it. He knows every tongue. He created every language. Hallelujah. Brother Ronnie, would you pray, sir? Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning for your presence that's in this house. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for the angels that are here, Lord. We can do nothing without you. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You'll find he's not too busy.
Amen. Hallelujah. John Stallings wrote that song. Beautiful song. I I was supposed to be on Nightline Nightline tomorrow night, so if you get a chance to watch. Uh, Donna, where's Donna? Praise the Lord. We want to welcome the... Are we on the Internet? We are? Okay. We want to welcome the Internet audience that's watching across the United States, Canada, uh, and around the world. We want to welcome you today to this service. We're so blessed to have you with us. And some of you, I, I know that you live in countries where you can't, you can't go to church. It's not legal to be a Christian. And I'm glad that you're watching. And, and we, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, we want to, you to just realize that this is your church congregation. This is your brothers and sisters here because we're so glad to have you. If you're watching and you haven't received Jesus, just keep watching. Uh, because we, we want to talk to you about Jesus. He wants to come into your heart, and he wants to save you. So God bless all of you for watching. Were you watching live through streaming, or were you watching through video on the Internet on our web page? God bless you. You know, we had our children up here today, and I thank God for everybody that works with the children. Hey. Beautiful. He's everything to me. He's able to keep that which I've committed unto him unto that day. 1 Corinthians 2. Hallelujah. 
How many know their riches in Christ Jesus? Where do you find out about them? In this book right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I wasn't going to read the whole thing, but I am now. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excel, excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He didn't know the Corinthians were idol worshiper. They were, they were pagans. They had their temples and they had their orgies and they had to, oh man, they were in all kind of gods that they worship. But he didn't care about those. They're counterfeit. If you want to find out what a real, if you want to find out what is counterfeit, you compare it to a real dollar bill. <laughs> That's what you compare it to. <laughs> you don't compare counterfeit to counterfeit. So the Lord, you know, Paul, he wasn't going to compare Christianity to the gods they believed in. All he wanted to know about these people is that he could preach Jesus, him crucified and resurrected. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. When Paul came to Corinth, he met a couple named Priscilla and Aquila. They were tent makers. And so he moved in with them. And he began to preach. Usually when Paul went to a place, he began to preach to the Jews first. So he went into synagogues. And so the certain synagogues he went in, they rejected him. And he shook the dust off his feet. And he went to another guy's house that was a Jew that lived next to the synagogue. And this guy came to Jesus. But Paul was being threatened by the Jews. And a lot of people think that Paul didn't have fear, but he had fear. You know, I've done a lot of things for God that I, I didn't do in the absence of fear. I did them in the presence of fear. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, you, some of you say, well, you know, if I'm going to do something for God, I'm going to do it and then with the absence of fear. No, no, not necessarily. You may do it in, in the presence of fear, but you do it anyway. Y'all probably don't know this guy. He was the voice of the Assemblies of God, uh, C.M. Ward. He was one of the greatest preachers, one of the greatest men of God, orators, I guess I've ever heard. I mean, he could keep an audience, man, and just the anointing would be there so strong. And somebody asked him one time, said, Brother Ward, have you, have you ever been nervous before you preached? He said, listen, I've been in a Holiday Inn praying for a hurricane to come <laughs> where I wouldn't have to preach that night. <laughs> but he, he, Paul was faced with fear because, listen, Paul, if you read in Second Corinthians, Five times he was beaten with 39 stripes. He was stoned and left for dead. He, he was shipwrecked. He, were, he went through all of these things. And he, he, he knew that these people were dangerous. They were religious zealots. They, they hated the message of Christ. So he had some fear in him. So when he come into Corinth... He, he had went to these people and he shook the dust off and then he had had some success with some more Jews. You can read about in Acts 18. You can read about uh, the different places that Paul went. And he must have had fear because that night he had a vision and he saw the Lord. And the Lord said, Paul, don't fear. Don't hold back anything. I've got much people in this place. Don't be afraid. Well, what did that mean? It didn't mean he had a lot of Christians there because they hadn't anybody been in there preaching. It meant that I've got a big harvest here. How many know God's got a big... He, he's interested in a harvest. So he told Paul, he said, don't you fear, I'll take care of you. Nobody will touch you. Jesus came to him in a vision and told him that. But when he came there, he came there in fear and trembling. How many of y'all had to ever had fear and trembling before you was going to 
do something for the Lord. <laughs> so he said, he, his speech wasn't with preaching and enti- in, uh, with uh, enticing words. His preaching wasn't with enticing words, but it was in a demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I tell you, that's what gets everybody's attention is the anointing. He had the anointing, and he went there in the anointing, and he had a demonstration of God's power. God's going to do it again, but he's going to have to wet everybody with his dew. Come on now. There's going to have to be a hunger and thirst come on people for the presence of God. And that's when there's going to be a demonstration of power. It's going to begin in this church right here. It's going to hit in this church right here. People are going to start getting healed. Now, we've already had some people healed who wasn't even prayed for. don't even know when they got healed. When other people get healed. When people got started getting healed and a demonstration of power takes place, people start getting saved. I bet you all didn't know that. You did, didn't you? People, people begin to get saved. You can not only hear this gospel, you can see the evidence of it. Hallelujah. In demonstration of the anointing and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. This guy, when he first called me on the phone, left me a message. He said he was a Pentecostal preacher. Then I called him up and I asked for a brother so-and-so at the hotel. He was staying because he wanted me to call him. And then he said, I'm Dr. (laughs) So-and-so. And then he said, could somebody pick me up over here at the hotel? And then he said that he needed some money. (laughs) But he told me, he said, you don't know how smart I am. If he was smart enough, he would. (laughs) He wouldn't. (laughs) Are you with me? He needs a demonstration of power. Before I got off the phone with him, he owned up to me. He hadn't been to church in two years. It's hard to lie to a preacher when he's anointed. They'll tell you the truth. (laughs) I tell you, the anointing's on you. will draw the truth out of people. I've had people stand and lie in my presence, and and I just stand there and listen at them before they got through. They had to tell me the truth. The anointing. Come on now. People to tell you I'm saved, and if you just stand there and listen to them long enough, they'll tell you they ain't right with God. There's a demonstration of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. That we need in the church again. We used to have it in the churches, but we don't have it now. It's America has got to the place where they arrest preachers for correcting their children. And then try to slander them on the television. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, they got a hold of Creflo this week for whipping his daughter because he was telling her he couldn't go to a party that she wanted to go to. And he spanked her and got her in the floor and tore her hiney up. And the cops came because she called the cops. Well, I tell you, the devil's mad at spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-anointed people. He wants to slander you. He wants to... He, he wants to... He, 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 He wants to shame you in front of people. But I'm going to tell you, people are going to be running to you because of the anointing that's on your life. They're going to be holding on to you, to your coattail and to your shirt tail and say, tell me how to get to this Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many knew about Creflo? How many didn't know about him? Well, supposedly they rested him Friday. (laughs) <laughs> shame on them a few years ago they wouldn't even answer the call they said go ahead and contract, correct your child if I'd have been there I'd have loaned him my belt tear both of them up <laughs> that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God our faith is not in the wisdom of men it doesn't matter how good somebody can preach our faith is not in their ability to preach our faith is in the message that they're preaching that's where the power is. It's in the word of God. Hallelujah. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. <laughs> Aren't you glad you know what that word perfect means? Mature, grown up. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, 
nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. The wisdom of this world won't get you saved. The wisdom of this world won't get you delivered from drug addiction. The wisdom of this world won't get you delivered from prostitution, from pornography. It won't get you delivered from alcohol. It won't get you delivered from lying. It won't get you delivered from a cursing profanity spirit on you. It won't get you delivered from, from, uh, from unrighteousness. It, it won't get you delivered. But th- Jesus, the anointing, will break all chains and shackles. Do you know this this church in Corinth is the church that God decided to give the teaching on the operation of the gifts of the Spirit because Paul stayed there one year and a half that first time and he got those people so full of the Holy Ghost, the gifts was popping and operating everywhere, miracles was happening and he had to lay out instructions on how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Wouldn't it be too bad? Wouldn't it be too bad if we got everybody so full of the Holy Ghost that everybody they touched got healed and everybody they prayed for got slain in the Spirit? Come on now. Wouldn't that be awful that we had to correct that? (laughs) Glory to God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are mature? Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world under our glory, unto our glory. How many know that when you come to God, you've got to come as a baby? You've got to come like a little child. You can't come proud and say, Well, you know, God, you don't know how much information I got, how wise, how bright I am and how wise I am. You come as a little child. You come as a little child. Isaiah 6 says, go and tell them, but they'll hear not. They'll see not. They'll understand not. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says what? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can they know him because they're spiritually discerned. John 11, John 11. I want to read you something. No, not John, Matthew, Matthew. I tell you, I felt sorry for Creflo. I prayed for him. I didn't know about it until Nathan called me. And then I started seeing on Fox News down there at the bottom of the screen. They, they love to try to embarrass a preacher, especially a Pentecostal preacher. Man, I pray God to help him in this. How many of y'all ever tried to, he was telling his 15, 16-year-old girl that she couldn't go to a party, and she said, I'm going. Now, why was he telling her not to go to that party? Because he was protecting her. And she says she's going anyway. So he gets a hold of her. How many of y'all ever got angry before? They say you don't don't correct your children in anger, but I tell you, I have done it before. If they talk back to you, a child's not supposed to be running the house. The parents run in the house. So he smacked her. I've had my jaws rung before. I heard bells. Talk back to my mama. If my mama didn't get me, my daddy get me. Pow! I've, <laughs> it helped me a lot, Paula. So then he got her down in the floor and whipped her. Whipped her fanny. And then she called the law. If she had a car, she would not be driving anymore. If she had any privilege, she wouldn't have no privileges no more. Come on now. Matthew 11, verse 25. At that time, I'm going to read. Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Hallelujah. He's revealed them unto babes. What does that tell you? 
That guy on the phone, he told me, he said, you don't know how smart I am. <laughs> Listen, people. You don't have to have a Ph.D., which I do have. I got a Piedmont High School diploma. <laughs> you do not have to have a Ph.D. to understand what God wrote in here. All you've got to do is read it, and the Holy Ghost will interpret it for you. He will tell you what it's saying. He will speak to you and fill you up with his will, his riches, his glory, his wisdom, his understanding, the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal what God is saying to you. All you've got to do is be like a little baby. Lord, I may have eight years of college, but I really, <laughs> I need to know you and understand you. That's all you've got to do. 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can they know him because they are spiritually discerned. But a born-again person can understand what God's saying. But you've got to pick the book up to know. You've got to read it. You've got to read it. It says, We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery in the mystery to those that are lost. But to us babies, we understand it. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord. These <laughs> people. But don't you look, this is where we're going. This is where I want to start. But as it is written, how many of y'all ever heard this at a funeral? But as it is written... But as it is written, I have not seen, nor er, ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. You hear me? Amen. Glory to God. I have not seen. Man does not understand what God's prepared for him. Glory to God. Yes, amen. Don't stop there. Are you with me? Look at somebody and say, don't stop there. <laughs> I have not seen, ear have not heard, and not entered into the heart of man what God had prepared for them. Go to the next one, which is a conjunction. It is the word, what is the word? But. When you see but, pay attention. It's a connection. It's a conjunction. Look at this. But. God hath revealed them unto us. What? What did he reveal unto us? What entered into the heart of man? When you put the word of God in you, something enters into your mind. It renews your mind and it goes into your heart. And the Holy Spirit has it in memory there. How many of y'all use a computer? I'm not smart enough to, uh, just to cut one on and, and, and get to the web page and, 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 and get to Jeanette's Facebook but when, when this word goes in, it goes into your mind first. You're, 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 you're renewing your mind first, but it also goes down in here. What does it do? It puts the word of God in the memory bank. It goes in the memory bank. And every time that you confront something, every time you're confronted with something, the, 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 the computer, the Holy Spirit, will we'll tell you the promises of God and give you the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, look, look at what it says. The whole, the, but God had revealed them unto us by what? Everybody say Holy Ghost. Anointing. For the, for the, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Somebody say, I'm in the deep things of God. I am too. Because the Word of God the revelation of the word of God is entered into my heart. What things which God hath prepared for them that love him? Hallelujah. God's prepared things for them that love him. Hebrews eleven six. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is God. 
He that come of God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. He says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Hallelujah. How many know the spirit of God knows everything? If the spirit of God knows everything, I got the spirit of God in me and he's revealing to me the deep things of God. Everything that God has prepared for me, he's revealing them to me. Glory to God. I was reading in my journal yesterday. God always does something in June in the, in the ministry. He always does something. I don't, I don't know. It's the last part of June. He always does something. And I was reading about July. About I don't journal every day, but I mean y'all journal. I don't journal every day, but I journal. I put the things in there God leads me to put in there. And I was looking where in July, July 2002 that I was getting ready to go overseas. And, it, and it, this thing had struck me that I couldn't even walk through the house and get my breath. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk through the house. I couldn't get my breath. I'm talking about I had no breath. I didn't have no breath, man. And I, I had chest pains before I went over there. And I had chest pains when I got over there. And I went and preached and prayed for the sick. Had a time getting up the steps. Just had to stop there at the hotel and go up the steps and everything. And I was thinking, you know, God, here it is, 2012. And I've just been out, I've been out all the, you know, most of this week working. I can go up these steps. I can go up those steps. I can go up these steps. You give me some steps, I can go up them. You say, well, how did you receive that kind of touch? God revealed it. That was one of the things that he had for me. You understand what I'm saying? He he gave me scriptures during that time. Those years I wanted the thing out. I walked it out, glory to God. God did it. And 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 I'm not telling you I'm like I, that I'm like I was when I was 16 years old. I'm not. But, but I'm just so happy that I'm just so, that God's touched me so much. I'm just so, I'm just so much rejoicing in it. You say, how did you know that he did that for you? I found out about it in here. He told me that, that, that even though he had, even though I was being chastened, I was being corrected, I, 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 God was allowing this to happen to me. That it wasn't he. That I wasn't going to die. That I was going to live. And that I, God had work for me to do. How do you find that stuff out? Do you know some people die early because they just give up and die because a doctor told them they're going to die? Do you know they just give up and listen to the doctor and just say, "I guess I'm going to die." Hey, just because a doctor told you he's going to die don't mean you're going to die now. You may die one day, but don't mean you're going to die now. But Lily May took her. They told her, they said, you got, you got lung cancer. You're going to die. And she looked at that doctor several years ago and said, you're not God. Come on now. You're not God. You know, she don't have no lung cancer. Miss Kennedy had it twice. She had it in the 60s. It got in her lymph nodes. She died at what, 86, 80-something years old? 88 years old, my God. How did she find out she had that promise? The Spirit of God, hallelujah, taught her because she sat down like a little child and listened to him. She was going to a church when she got it they didn't believe in divine healing. She left that church and got in a church that believed in divine healing. I don't understand people that are dying and they don't go to a Pentecostal church. You say they may die anyway. That's true. But at least give God a chance to touch them. 
and to heal them. Glory to God. I'm Pentecostal if you don't know it. Why are you Pentecostal? Because I believe in the full gospel, all of the gospel. Why do you believe in that? Because I'm in the deep things of God. What are the deep things of God? The promises that are yea and amen in this word right here. The deep things of God has renewed my mind and strengthened my spirit. Hallelujah. And give me the strength and the power to stand on the word of God and say, no, that thing's not going to kill me. I'm going to finish my course. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. He said he'd give it to you. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. Somebody say Holy Ghost. The Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. What man knoweth things of God, save the spirit of man which is in him. I'm trying to close. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. The spirit of God's the only one knows the things of God, and he's the only one that can reveal them to you. But you've got to sit down like a little baby. You can't be a know-it-all. You can't be unteachable. You've got to be teachable. Glory to God. If you're teachable, the Holy Ghost will teach you. You got to find somebody that don't know everything. Ha. I've known people before, bless their heart, they were sweet people. They knew the history of the church. They know the dates. They can tell you the the uh, uh, those meetings they use. I can't think. I've got the books on them myself. I got all that stuff. I got John Wesley's writings. I got all the, the the doctrines of the early church, huh? Nicene fathers. I got all that stuff. But I'm gonna tell you something. That won't do nothing but put some history in it. It might help you, but it won't impress nobody. It won't get nobody healed. You can know all of that stuff and still not know who you are in Christ. And the devil can whip you, beat you up, punch you out, beat you down. Come on now, glory to God. But if you know who Jesus is and who you are in Jesus, that devil, you're not going to give no place to him. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's a destroyer. He comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. Jesus come that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. Just give me a few more minutes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to show you something. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world. Look at somebody and say, this is very important. Very important. You can't have the spirit of the world and the spirit of God working together. They won't work together. The spirit of the world is the way the world thinks. That's why you got to put this in here. You got to get that spirit of the world out of your mind. You got to put that in here. You know, we was on a plane going to Havana one time from Porta Plata. We left Porta Plata, and we had these guys on there, and they had these. Uh, they were with uh, uh, what? What is that? Uh, the one that makes airplanes, Airbus. They was with Airbus, and they had their prostitutes with them, and. And they were partying, man. They were, you know, they were secretaries and stuff. You could tell what was going on. They were partying. And it was a small plane, had about 20 people in it, 25 people in it. And, and, and Vail D. Cooper and uh, Louis Saicito and uh, uh, I think Yvonne might have been on there and, and uh, Mitchell Martinez. And we was on there. And they was up there partying. They were laughing. Oh, yes, yes, give me another drink. We got tired of it. So I got my little Bible out and I turned it up and said, Woo! Wow! And I took another drink. I said, Woo! So I said, Veldy, you want a drink? And he said, Yeah, give me one. He throwed his leg at old long leg. Ah! Woo! And then we got to singing. Lewis got his guitar and got to, got to, got to singing Amazing Grace, man. We shut their party down. Some of them came back there and started talking to us and told us somebody in their family was preachers. They come under conviction. The Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you, we got the power. It's in here. I got it in my mind, and it got in my mind, and it got down here in my heart. Hallelujah. I put it in the software, and it got in the hardware. It's all in there. That's why I know who I am in Christ. That's why 
sometimes people say, he's cocky. No, he ain't cocky. He's confident. Come on now. Who's your confidence in? It's in God. It's in his word. It's in his spirit. Hallelujah. There ain't no intellectual people that can put me down. If I come under the anointing and they're lost and God's after them, I tell you, I can make them look foolish because I can give them the word of God with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Don't tell me I ain't done it. I've already done it. Hallelujah. Talking to very intelligent people and they, and they realize that they don't have the knowledge that they thought they had. You got to have the knowledge of the Son of God. Hallelujah. I'm spitting. Look out. I got to hurry. It's anointed spit. You quit going around saying, I ain't no wish I had the anointing. My God, you, you ladies, get it. All you got to do is be like a baby and God will fill you up. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely. Whoop, look at somebody say, I got to shout on that we got to look at the things that are freely. Mm. Freely given to us of God. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything we can ask or think according to the power that's working in us. i got some power in me. The power of the Word and the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Woo! Let me hear him finish this. Which things also we speak not in words with man's wisdom, which man's wisdom teacheth. Have you noticed how unintelligent, if that is such a word, that these politicians, when they open their mouth, they make a fool out of their self. And some of them, are, most of them are lawyers. Which thing we speak not in word. They've got this, they've got South Carolina in such a mess, they don't even know what they're voting. They're going to, what they're going to vote. They don't even know how. These are intelligent people. They can't even set up a voting machine. How many of them know the voting process is messed up? These are intelligent people. They need to get some old Holy Ghost moment, some old mama. Out of the church. Say, come here, mama. You full of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> come here and tell us how to run this thing. We got this country in a mess. Tell us how to run the country. That praying mama gets us out of this mess. Come on now. Point your finger at somebody and say, hey, I'm smarter than, the, than, than, than you think I am because I got the Holy Ghost in me. I got the Holy Ghost in me. Come on now. You have all wisdom and knowledge in you when you got him in there. I got to hurry with this. I'm in Romans. How did I get in Romans? Which things also we speak not in words. It was man wisdom to teach you, but the Holy Ghost teach you. Say, the Holy Ghost teaching me. He's comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. He's comparing the spiritual with the spiritual. You say, well, how do you compare the spiritual with the spiritual? I tell you how. I tell you how. You get your mind renewed. You get full of the Word of God and the Holy Ghost. If you hear a voice, how many of y'all hear a voice sometimes? You do this. I hear it sometimes. I'm in a foreign country. I hear it with an accent. <laughs> the Spirit says, do this. And I say, oh, and all of a sudden, my computer comes down. And it's like, oh, don't do that. Why don't do that? Because I'm comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. That voice I heard wasn't the voice of God. It was either the voice of my flesh or the voice of a demon. Come on now. And it said, do this, do this. And no, the Holy Ghost said, no, 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 no. Because look, you've got to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. People say, I hear from God. If they hear and it don't line up with this word, they didn't hear from him. Because you've got to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. What's your voice that you hear, if it's the spirit of God, will line up with the word of God. Because you will compare, your spirit will compare, it will umpire, it will discern where it's God or not. Because the Spirit and the Word agree. You compare spiritual things, Holy Ghost, 
Spiritual things, word of God. Spiritual things with spiritual things. That's the voice of the spirit because it lines up with the word. I've had people come to me and say, preacher, would you agree with me on this? I say, on what? And they tell me. I say, no, I ain't agreeing with you on that. That don't line up with the word of God. What if somebody comes up to you and says, would you pray? I got an unspoken request. Pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Come on now. God's will, not theirs. Are you with me? You say, well, I don't get straight now. Get in the word. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish on him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. He can't discern it. Because he ain't born again. He ain't a baby. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he is judged by no man. He that is spiritual judgeth all things. How does he judge it? By the word of God. Huh? How do you judge things? By the word of God. Well, how can he say, no man judges me? You see people in deep sin and they say, you can't judge me. You can't judge me. Oh, I muted. I hit it. <laughs> the Word of God judges me. How many know the Word of God judges me? How many know man by, not, not, not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God? The Word of God judges me. All right, how come somebody can't judge me? They can when I'm not living right. If I'm, not, if I'm not walking in the Word, they can judge me. They can judge my fruit. But listen, if I hear from God... And it lines up with the Word of God. I compare spiritual things with spiritual things. The Holy Ghost and the Word of God. Y'all bear with me just a minute. This is going to help you. And God tells me to do something. I tell, just say, let me give you an example. He, he tells me in the morning, he says, Roy, I, I, want you to, I want you to go to Charleston. And I want you to go down there and on the street down there. And I want you to preach. And I go down there and preach. And somebody come down there and see me from Greenville and say, what that guy doing down here? He's acting like a fool. They can't judge me. You know why? Hmm? Because God. I, I cannot be judged in that area because I've heard from God. God told me to do it. No man can judge me. It won't do him any good. Are you with me? If God tells you to do something, if you get it out of the word and you get it from the spirit through the word and you go do it and somebody says, what are you doing out over there? God sent me over here. Well, you are not to be over here. Shut up. You can't judge me. You can be nice when you say it. Shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. You can't judge me. Why? Because you've already been judged. You, God told you to do it. Let me get the rest as we go. I want to read that again. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Who is a spiritual person? He's a person in a word. He's a person in, a, in, in prayer. He's a person that, that, that seeks the Lord. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have what? We have what? We have the mind of Christ. When you get the mind of Christ in something, don't worry about what other people think. Don't be nasty. Smile when you say, mind your own business. <laughs> Are you with me? I won't read this and we go. I won't read this. Just read this. I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of what? Of God. 
Look at Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. We'll read it. We'll go we'll read one more. We'll go. Ephesians 4. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 22. That you put off concerning the former conversation and the former lifestyle, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. How do you put him on? You put him on by getting in this. You put him on by praying. You put him on by worshiping. You put, put, put him on through relationship. In Philippians 2, it talks about having this mind in you that was in Christ, which is a, he humbled himself. Hallelujah. I tell you, it's a good preaching. It's a good preaching, brother. Well, I encourage you in the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you, man, it's a oh, powerful, hallelujah, anointing. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, Oh, you say, what you doing? Wait a minute. Let's see what he wants to do. Hallelujah. Listen, we're just so glad you joined us today. We bless you. We love you. If you don't know Jesus, pray this prayer with me. If you believe he's the son of God, he resurrected from the dead, pray this prayer with me. Mean it with your heart, and God will come into your life. Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died for my sins. I believe on the third day you arose from the dead. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Hallelujah. Cleanse me with your blood. I declare that I'm a Christian, that Jesus lives in my heart. Oh, bless you. And I pray for those that are sick. I pray for those that are bound up. I pray God touch you, heal you, deliver you, bless you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. It may be you live in a country where you can, it's not legal to have a Bible. But listen, you, you connect up to this service, and we'll teach you the Word of God. Hallelujah. We, we consider it a pleasure and we consider it a responsibility and we bless you and thank you so much for listening. Hallelujah and watching. Would y'all put-